Welcome to this short podcast on an interesting piece of Greek art, the Vix Crater. I'm your host, Spencer, and my co-host for this conversation will be Keely. Hello. Mike. Hello. Josh. Kalimera. And that's it. Now, to the rest. The Vix Crater is a very interesting for a number of reasons. One, what it was for. Did you know that the ancient Greeks knew how to party? Second, the sheer magnitude of thing, the thing and how it was co- constructed. Finally, where it was found tells us something about the ancient world many of us may not realize. So, what was a crater for, Josh? So, before I get into that, I'm just going to start off with a fun fact. Crater, in the Vix Crater part, is Greek for a large vessel. And that's actually where we get the word crater, as in the big hole when a meteor strikes. What? I did not know that. Dun, dun. Neither I did I. That. I made it up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But that's so legit. God. Don't even. Don't even do this to me. So this thing, the Vix Crater and other vessels like it, were used in events called symposium. And what these were were essentially just a uh, large gathering of the males in Greek society where they would just drink and talk, much like a symposium in modern days. There would also be a designated sober person there who is called a symposiarch, and that just means the lord of the common drink. And what this person's job was, was to pretty much make sure nobody got rowdy, and everybody was able to find a ride home. (laughs) And also... Are you you saying... Oh, I'll let you finish. Hold on. (laughs) Okay, thank you. And he was also responsible for watering down the wine, depending on what kind of event it was going to be, whether or not they were just about to get buck wild, in which it would just be straight up wine. Which almost never happened, by the way. Like, a one-to-one, that was like a... We're all going to die tomorrow. Let's get screwed up, party. Get wrecked. We're going to get so drunk, (laughs) we have to hold on to the grass (laughs) so we don't fall off the earth. (laughs) Yeah. So my question is, so is this the, what was that word you used? Symposium. Symposiums? Because I'm great at English. Um, So it was a frat party. Uh, it was an ancient frat party, yeah. is what it sounds like to me. Yeah, depending on the what, mixture of wine to water, it would either be like a like a nerdy frat, where we all sat down and talked about politics and science and stuff, or it'd be a straight animal house if it was one to one. That's that's great. Ten of ten. Recommend. So, uh, just to go over, symposiarchs, they're, they're responsible for watering down the wine, depending on the uh, thing of the party. And also keeping track of all the bros at the party to make sure they weren't getting wild and messing up the rest of the town. So, and just like a little other note, when I say wine, I don't mean like, you know, Stella Rosa or that boxed wine crap that we get in the stores nowadays. This stuff was hella strong. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. And that was the purpose of the Vix Crater. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, a couple of interesting things as well is it actually had a strainer on top. Uh, there's like a lid to it that has a bunch of little holes in it. And the reason for that... That is what a strainer is. It, thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> the reason for that was this wine was very, very, like you said, very, very, very strong uh, so that it could be transported over a long time, periods of time without it being turning nasty or... And just so that it could be watered as well. And it also had a lot of like little junk in it. Like it wasn't filtered very well. So that's what the actual strainer was for. Uh, uh, so before oh. looking into this thing, I didn't, I honestly didn't know like, how much of a party a symposium could be. Uh, but the actual construction of the thing uh, is really interesting too. Uh, Want to talk about that, Mike? Yeah, so um, going with the kind of trying to keep the wine clean thing too, nifty part about bronze, which is what the crater is made out of, is that it is a natural antiseptic. So huh. you don't have to what? worry about yeah. all the nasty stuff. Yep, that's why... Um, Crazy. Today, in some medical fields, they actually use uh, bronze fixtures because you don't have to worry about things getting nasty. Top of it. Too nasty. Crazy. Bronze is also shit all around. super cool, especially for this, because you can do really intricate works of art with it because it is a softer metal, uh, such as the gorgons that are on it, which, fun fact, the gorgons on there actually started out by a bunch of Greek guys tricking the gorgons into hugging a big pot and saying, haha, joke's on you, and poured molten bronze over them, and that's how we got the picture. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Hey, you can't prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, well, uh, they. Uh, so. I love everything about that story. One hundred percent true. Ten of ten. Don't fact check. <laughs> An interesting fact about those gorgons too is they do have that early archaic Greek smile. So they got that that Cheshire cat grin on, despite I guess having molten uh, lead or bronze poured on them. 
They were into it. That yeah, was dude. their thing. That Don't was judge their, their kink. <laughs> Don't judge their kink. Uh, also, Spencer. another kind of interesting note about it is uh, all the parts were actually labeled alphabetically. So, and the reason for that, it doesn't make much sense to, you know, label all your parts because you figure it's to reassemble it. But, I mean, if this is staying in Greece, it's not a big deal, which this is very possibly a Spartan origin, uh, but we that's because the other things like this have been found in Sparta. And there's also a lot of these, a procession of actually hoplites, hoplites, however you want to pronounce it, and uh, all along the, the frieze below the trim. And that's actually a really interesting, like, complete piece that you can see. Because a lot of these friezes now, you know, they've, uh, like, the Corinthian marbles? I, I'm probably saying the wrong place. Ah! Um, they're, you know, they're not complete. So actually having something that's really nice and uh, inlaid in, or in relief and bronze that you can see to see this. This archaic style of these hoplites is actually really interesting. Oh, uh, but like I said, are uh-huh. are we going to ignore the fact that their cock and balls are dangling? Uh, hey, this is traditional Greek, okay? Pants were optional. <laughs> all right. I also want to point out this thing was massive, right? It's like how big was this thing? Oh, uh, five. Did we four? say the height? Was it five four? Yep, it's taller than you, Keely. Five. It's really all that matters. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's taller than me. It is three inches taller than me. Uh, Fun fact. And it's, uh, but it weighs a little less than you. <laughs> yeah, a little less. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse no. you. Uh, for anyone curious. It does not. Uh, that would be 460 pounds, <laughs> or I'm rounding here. Uh, yeah. Excuse you, I only weigh uh, a significant less amount of that. <laughs> Thank you very much. And given the size of this thing, it could actually... Rude. It, Okay, it could actually hold about 290 <laughs> gallons of water and wine. So that's that's a party. So uh, finally, I mean, this really was a, a feat of drinking engineering, this massive bronze thing. But where this thing was found is probably the most interesting part of this. So Keely, why don't you tell us about that? Um, it was found in Burgundy, <laughs> France? From Burgundy? In a grave? <laughs> with a woman? Around, from around... 500 BC. I think she was actually buried inside of it, gonna be uh, honest, you know. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, but uh, I can't be specific about that. But the weird thing is, what was also found with her was like a wine cup from Attica and several other things that I can't pronounce a wine pitcher, um, some necklaces, a gold torque, which may- maybe she was just filthy rich back then and she could afford. This giant crater of wine. It's actually really interesting that with. she had a gold torque because that is exclusively Celtic, right, Spencer? It's uh, uh, it was a Syrian gold. Yeah, torque, this I one think. was made in Syria. Um, yeah, so I mean, the fact that she had all of this stuff from a bunch of different places means that like there was a lot of trade back then, which you know, and that's super. cool. It might have been that the Syrians were like, "Hey, these Celtic guys, they really like these freaking torques, so let's make some and send them over to them." True. Yeah, that that wine pitcher was. Let's hook our <laughs> let's hook our brothers up. <laughs> uh, like the wine pitcher was from was Etruscan. Uh, the there's amphora from Massilia. Um, there were Baltic jewels and like precious stones, the necklaces. So it really showed like the amount of trade that would have gone on in this area because this is like the western part of France. And this, so they would have would have had to travel over at to what the ancient people would have thought was most of the world at this point. Well, minus the ones that actually had been on the Silk Road, but mm-hmm. it's neither here nor there. So it really shows the so prevalence. Cool. And when it was found in the grave, the woman was not in it. Uh, actually, <laughs> she uh, the 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 thing had actually collapsed though. It had telescoped down, and the restoration process involved. Uh, like ballooning it out to where it's currently at, which is really interesting con- considering you're seeing pictures of this now, what good shape it is in. Uh, so it's, it's a soft metal. Dude, thing, so. oh, it was true. Gorgons. Sire down Gorgons and did it. Gorgons did it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. Uh, so a crater was a mixing jug, meant for parties, and you could tell where on the scale from scholarly gathering to straight debauchery this party was by the ratio of wine to water in the crater. Uh, the Vix crater is huge. A person could easily hide in one, which would most likely... I'm saying she died in it. <sighs> which, well, I'm <laughs> saying you could jump out uh, out of it during a party, but you'd probably be pretty shmammered by the time you, drunk, you jumped out. Like a stripper. <laughs> That, yeah. that was implied. A stripper. <laughs> Finally, it was designed from the start to be able to be transported away from Greece, which is where it was found. Away from Greece and Burgundy? 
France, or what is now <laughs> Burgundy. Um, Burgundy? So this gives us a really good view of ancient trade and tells us that the Celts like to party too. So if you liked our uh, little jabber jawing here, then go ahead and find our regular show, Nerd Stop, where we discuss all things nerd, from Fallout to Star Wars to zombie survival. In fact, we're recording an episode tonight, so we might give you a little Easter egg to this episode. And that's all for this conversation. If your interest is piqued, go on out there and find some other, some reading and other episodes uh, videos on ancient Greek art or art history in general. There are very real connections to our an the ancestors in those dusty old tomes and drawing lectures. And remember, don't be a barbarian, water your wine.